Are you thinking about trying to make some extra money with digital writing? Are you considering whether you want to start a blog or a freelance writing business and trying to land clients? I get it. It's kind of a hard decision to make. I've been there. When I was new, I didn't know what I wanted to do either. In this, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down both of these types of writing businesses so you can make a better decision about which of them is a better fit for your lifestyle, your needs right now, and maybe even your long-term goals. What's up, guys? My name is Tom Scalisi, and I am a professional digital writer. Uh, I'm also a content marketer, author. Uh, I've got hundreds. I write hundreds of articles every single year, and I write for some of the biggest websites on the internet. I'm not telling you this to brag. I'm telling you this because I want to establish a little bit of authority on the topic and explain to you that I know what I'm talking about. So many people on YouTube are explaining how to start writing businesses or how to start blogs, and they don't really have any practical experience with the work. They've never tried to land jobs. They've never managed clients. They've never written the types of articles that actually rank on Google. They just know the, the hot button topics to talk about, to get the clicks, to get you to buy their course. So I'm not selling a course. This is completely, um, I don't even have a sponsor. This is my first video on YouTube. So this is just off the cuff me trying to help you. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the differences between blogging and freelance writing, because believe it or not, while they're both internet-based writing businesses, they are two different skill sets. They kinda, they do intermesh a little bit, but they're different. So I'm gonna explain what the pros and cons of each are so you can make a better decision. So let's start with blogging. Blogging became really popular in the late 90s, early 2000s, and people really started to monetize their blogs in the late 2000s and, and even like 2010 and on. Uh, I don't know what the fascination was, but in the beginning, people were writing about like their dogs, their their lives. The, they were just writing personal blogs, the same way that vlogs became really popular when Casey Neistat started just filming his every single day. That's what happened with blogging. I don't know if it was something to do with like reality TV and the real world, or if this was just like an insight for like a, a way for us to have insight into like a regular person's life every day, but they were super popular. Modern blogs are not like that. Modern blogs are usually niche websites, niche, I don't know how you want to say it, uh, websites where the, the website owner usually has a lot, of, a lot of expertise and knowledge. They write tons and tons of posts, usually about 500 to 3,000 words long about the topic, and they write really two types of articles. They write informational articles and they write uh, sales articles, so articles that are like selling a product or getting asking you to buy a product or a sponsored post where a company is paying them to write that article. So it's really just those two types, sales articles and informational articles. Informational articles can be like how-tos, they can be uh, explanations, they can be uh, press releases, things like that, but they are really just geared towards explaining a topic, whereas the sales articles are really geared towards making sure that the customer or the reader buys a product. So these sales articles, they could be um, affiliate posts, like I said, they can be sponsored posts, they can be reviews, they can be roundups, they can be anything that they can set up to get you to buy a product. The majority of the traffic that goes to blogs is going to be from search engines. And the number one search engine is obviously Google. What happens is the blogger starts to use these tactics called SEO or search engine optimization tactics. These tactics help them direct traffic from Google to their website. They have to build up a lot of authority on the topic, write a ton of blog posts, and really establish themselves as an expert. But once they do, they'll start ranking higher on Google. When they start ranking on page one, they'll start to get some traffic to their website from Google. At that point, they can monetize their blog with ads or affiliate marketing, which is when they set up special links that they get paid for when somebody clicks on and buys a product or even those sponsorship articles I was talking about where a company will pay them to write an article about their product. So all in all, to, to write and create a successful blog, you've gotta have some knowledge on SEO, which is a whole other topic that we'll cover. Uh, content planning, because you have to write articles in, the, in a particular order and make sure you're covering all the right topics. This is also an SEO topic. Uh, and, and you really have to just kind of start from the ground up and understand how to start a website, do a little bit of design and put together a content strategy. So it, it's a lot of work and it doesn't get paid. You won't get paid for it right away, but we'll get into that in a second. So now we're talking about freelance writing. 
So freelance writing is when you start a business that sells your writing services to a client and they pay you for articles and other, uh, other, other types of copy. It could be sales copy, which is called copywriting. It could be uh, landing page copy. It could be emails. It could be um, white papers. It could be case studies. It could be blog posts. You could be writing just blog posts for a client. So it's the same thing you'd be writing for a regular blog, but you're actually writing for a client. The client will pay you for those articles right away, and you get to walk away with a little bit of money every single time you work for them. Most freelancers get started in freelance writing because they either work in marketing already or because they or they find a job through one of the like the gig posting sites or the job posting sites. What they'll do is they'll find a job posting that kind of sounds interesting to them. They'll apply, they'll send um, their portfolio, which we also call a CV, with some of their, their best articles and they'll send them over to the client. If the client thinks it's a good fit, they'll hire them and they'll start writing articles for them. It's it's that simple. but. The thing is, is that sim just because something simple doesn't mean it's easy. And that's kind of the hang up. It's hard to get your first gig. In fact, like you kind of have to eat shit for a little while. you got to take low hanging fruit, any article you can get on like any topic that you can get. And you need to build your your uh, your portfolio by writing more and more articles. Eventually, you'll start writing articles that you're proud of and that you think you did a great job on. And once you have like a handful of them, like a good five to ten articles that you're really proud of you can put together a portfolio sort of decide on what your niche is going to be because it's really important to niche down when it comes to freelance writing and then start targeting the right clients but that's how it happens is that you you start start low start establishing yourself as a professional and then you can start to demand a little bit more money for your work all right so what are the pros and cons so we'll talk about the the pros and cons of blogging the pros of blogging are that you're going to build a ton of skills really quickly. You have to be your web designer. You have to be your editor. You have to be your content writer. You have to be the just about you have to wear all the hats. Also, you're going to learn SEO because you have to. Otherwise, your site's never going to rank and you're never going to get traffic. And you're going to learn content strategy. The issue with blogging is that you're not going to get paid for a long time. This is something that you have to do for the long term. You've got to start your website, crank out a ton of content without seeing a single dime, and then hopefully in eight to 12, 16 months to two, 24 months, maybe then you'll start to see some money. It takes time for your articles to rank on Google, and you have to be dedicated for the long haul just to get paid. So that's the real downfall of blogging, is that if you're not patient, it's not for you. The pros and cons to freelancing are, when you freelance, you get paid immediately. That's like you, you, you work, you get paid. Also, you get instant feedback from your client. If you suck, if your articles are absolute trash, you're going to find out. But that means you're not going to waste any time. You're not going to put out 30, 40, 50 articles a month on a blog and only to find out in 24 months that doesn't even work. You'll know right away when you send your articles to your client if they're any good. Uh, the other thing is, is like you get to decide how much money you make. I'm lucky to be in a niche that uh, I'm kind of like at the top of the food chain in, and I get paid pretty well for my articles. And once you establish yourself as an expert, you can do that too as a freelancer. The other thing is, is that freelance writing can actually be scalable. You can turn it into like an agency and, and hire writers, hire editors, and actually build this thing out to something that's beyond what you ever thought it was gonna be. So it can either be like a one person business where it's just you, writing the content and sending it to your clients, or you can turn it into an agency. It depends on how much you want to do, how much work you want to do, if you can want to continue writing, or if you want to just farm it out to a group of writers that you trust, it's up to you. There are definitely cons to freelance writing. First off, some clients friggin' suck. They are like the worst to deal with. They're a pain in the ass. Um, they think they know writing, so they send you back edits that don't make any sense. And it's just, it can be miserable dealing with the wrong clients. Also, when you first start, you may really, you might end up writing about a lot of shit that you really don't care about. And that can be, uh, that can be like mind numbing and soul sucking because you have to get through those articles before you can actually establish yourself as an expert and get into the stuff that you really want to write about. So in that aspect, you, you feel like you're selling your soul to the devil for a little while. And that that's really hard to get through. The other two problems that you'll find with freelance marketing is that number one, your writing 
and getting paid for it, but you're making somebody else continuous money. So a lot of the time when you work for uh, a large media outlet, you're writing an article that's going to be like an affiliate marketing post. That post after you write it is going to continue to make money for the media outlet and you only get paid once. Whereas if you were a successful blogger and you were putting a blog post up that was going to make you money for, for the long term, that's a little bit better of a situation. The other issue is if you don't write, you don't get paid. And that's kind of the same thing with any self-employed business. Um, if you're not working, you're not going to get paid. You don't get vacation time. You don't get time off, all this stuff. And you could say the same thing about blogging. But if you're successful with blogging, you can actually build yourself relatively passive income because your articles will continue working for you over time. Whereas, uh, you know, and, and they could be affiliate marketing or ads. Whereas when you're just a freelance writer, if you're not working, you're not getting paid. And that can cause a lot of stress if you're not used to that lifestyle. So the question is, which should you do? Well, blogging can teach you a lot of skills. Blogging can teach you to be a website designer. It can teach you to write blog posts, obviously content writing. Uh, it can teach you to learn SEO. It can teach you a lot of skills that you can then parlay into another career down the road if your blog doesn't take off. On the other hand, freelance writing, you get paid right away and the money's pretty good. Uh, if, if you're not good at it, you'll find out and you won't waste a lot of time. And uh, you still, you're still gonna learn some skills from the, the clients that you work for. Especially if you work for like a large media outlet, what they're gonna do is they're going to teach you what they use for their best practices for SEO. So you're just gonna, you're gonna learn what they're doing and hopefully they, they've paid some decent SEO people and you can follow their lead. And then at the same time, if the articles don't work out, you still get paid for them but they're the ones that are gonna end up losing the money on it because they pay you and the article didn't work. And I think that's important because the truth is, is that blogging is changing every single day. Google has uh, really rocked the, the blogging world over the last couple of months in uh, August of 2023, September, 2023. Google really rocked the world with what's called the helpful content update. And I'll go into that into another video, but when you are writing for somebody else, they're the ones that are assuming that risk, you're not. So. That's another reason why you might want to consider a freelance writing business. So what do I think? My opinion, I think you should start a freelance writing business first. I think you should find some clients, get into a, a niche or a niche niche that uh, you really enjoy working in and that you can make a lot of money in. And then I swear you'll, you'll enjoy going to work every single day. But you need to spend some time there, learn about content marketing, learn about SEO, learn about strategy and um, and, and like figuring out what what types of articles you need to be writing. And once you've done that for somebody else for long enough, you can then take those skills and start your own blog about something that you love to write about. And at that point, if, if you're good enough, your blog posts and your, uh, your website will take off on its own and you can continue making money freelancing, but then you have less risk with blogging. So I hope that helps guys. That's just a breakdown. I'll do more of this type of stuff. I just kind of really want to share my knowledge and experience with you guys and help you figure out kind of like what the digital writing world looks like. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. I'll try to answer them in the comments, but I'll also put them in another video and we'll, we'll work on it from there. All right. Thanks for listening guys. Take care.